The movie Silent Hill was released in 2006 and is based on the video game franchise of the same name. It's an older series of games, with the first one being released in 1999, but they're great. Naturally, after the game was a success, there were tons of people who wanted to make Silent Hill the movie. Christoph Gans, the director of the film, was able to secure the movie rights after sending Konami a 37-minute video explaining his vision for the film and why the games were important to him. Funny, making long videos about things that I like hasn't gotten me shit. Movies based on video games are hard to make. You're taking a story from an interactive medium that's different for every player and trying to turn it into a passively consumed film that scratches the same itch. Plus, there's so many stakeholders that you have to please, from the existing fan base to new film goers who have never even touched a PlayStation. I didn't even know it was based on a game. I've never played a computer game. And the fans are not easy to please. Roger Avery wrote the film, and he received threats from fans of the game series who insisted that only they could write the film, and that if he messed up the script, they were going to find him and kill him. But they made the movie anyway. They even had a PlayStation on set so that they could play the game between scenes and use it to figure out what kind of shots they wanted. So is the film any good? Well, it depends on who you ask. Critics sort of hated it. Most people didn't really like it, actually. But the movie has somewhat of a cult following. It also made a healthy profit, but I would imagine that that's due to the popularity of the original source material. I like the games, so when I heard about this film, I knew I had to watch it. When I saw how mixed the reviews were, I knew I really had to watch it and make a video about it for your entertainment. So sit back, grab a soda, and hang out while we dive into this film scene by scene. Sharon! Sharon! Bam, cold open. Honestly, it's a horror movie staple at this point, so let's see how this one pans out. Sharon! Anyone else getting Ozzy Osbourne from this? Ah, that must be Sharon about to fall off that cliff. Her mom saves her before she falls, but not without some religious imagery. Nice traffic dodging. He must play a lot of Frogger. Just in case you forgot the name of the movie. She said it again. I know. So this cold open is only about three minutes, but it's actually not so bad. It's just a pretty tight, intense three minutes. They're not over explaining stuff. It's good. It works. This is an amazing lion. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, meow. Watch my other video where I watched a cat movie. Daddy's not coming. No, oh, sweetie, it's going to be just you and me. Oh, and by the way, she kind of kidnapped her own daughter. They use the music from the video game in this movie. And honestly, it's a great decision because they are bangers. Anyone else getting hints of a religious theme here? And sometimes you talk about a place called Silent Hill. That's why we're gonna go there. Your daughter keeps almost dying in her sleep and then screaming Silent Hill at the top of her lungs. I kind of get why Rose wants to take her there. We get the exposition of Silent Hill being a ghost town by watching Chris do a Google search, which is kind of lame. Sharon also draws a bunch of demonic type stuff in her sleep. Maybe she's possessed. Maybe it's just a phase. I don't like that, mommy. Baby, you, you can't remember Who doing did this. That? Whoa, whoa, whoa. This place, Smitty's, seems like a nice local spot. All day breakfast, notary public, live bait, tattoos, body piercings. That's quite the establishment. I gotta go to Smitty's. Can you wait in the car for me? I'm suspicious of this cop. I don't trust anyone who wears that much leather. Is everything all right? Don't talk to strangers. Destroyed. Listen, honey, we gotta put Sharon in a hospital. So here, Chris calls Rose asking her to take Sharon to a hospital rather than to Silent Hill. It's funny to see Sean Bean playing the role of a concerned but powerless husband. Let's hope he doesn't get his head lopped off like in Game of Thrones. Keep your seatbelt fastened, honey. Rose decides to run from the cops because she's been playing too much GTA. This scene isn't so much thrilling as it is annoying. The radio noises and the little girl screaming almost made my ears bleed. Rose veers off the road and thwacks her head on the steering wheel. Gentle reminder to everyone out there to get your airbags checked. Sure. And the kid is gone, which you probably saw coming. 
I'm not hating the movie so far. It's got an interesting amount of mystery to it, but I get the feeling that we're heading downhill from here. It's a pretty snow scene. Nope, that's ash falling from the sky. Look everyone, it's the title shot. Hey look, it's a prominently featured drugstore sign. I hope that's significant later because the only thing I'm going to remember from this scene is Nathan Drugs. Shit! All this spinny cam is making me dizzy. Fun fact, most of this movie was shot in Canada. Is this what Canada looks like? Shit! Honey? I don't know if it's the random stairway that descends into darkness or the ominous siren that just started going off, but I have a feeling something bad is about to happen. Good thing she always has a lighter on her so she could see in the dark. But Rose, you really ought to stop smoking. It's a bad habit. Despite her unrealistically bright lighter flame, she still manages to run into this barrel. Oh look, she's making friends already. What's with these people in horror movies and shaking fences when you should be climbing them? These babies are kind of fun, but the noise that they're making is really annoying. Someone get these babies some lotion. You get it? Because they're ashy? Alright, next scene. Get up! The babies are gone now, and Rose is in a bowling alley. But let's pause here to point out the set extension. One thing I like about this movie is that they use some classic film techniques like practical effects and set extensions. This shot of the bowling alley is kind of an obvious example of where they used a painting to make up the setting for the shot, and then they filmed the shot of Rose in the studio and kind of shoved them together. Does it look good? Does it look bad? Eh, I don't really mind it. Okay, but this part has me freaking out. They use this shot that looks like it's literally from a 1999 video game. Am I the only one who sees how crappy these fences look? They're just two-dimensional pixelated fences. In the game, they use big chasms like this to stop the player from straying off of the map. Similarly, they use it here as an excuse for why none of the characters can leave the town. Only the dark one opens and closes the door to Silent Hill. I'm looking for my daughter. I'm afraid that she's been hurt. We've all lost our children. We meet a new character in this scene, Dahlia, or Dahlia, however you want to say it. And it's funny how this woman is clearly very pretty, despite the fact that they go through all this trouble to do this makeup to make her look like an old witch. They hate. They hurt my child. This scene is decent. I like the editing, the choreography of the conversation is cool, but I feel like most viewers will come away from it thinking, okay, what did that even tell us? It's fine, half the conversations are like that. My wife, she came through here last night. Maybe you saw her. Now we get to return to the subplot where Chris is worried. Town's closed down because of the coal fire still burning underground. They made Silent Hill based on a real ghost town in Pennsylvania. Centralia, Pennsylvania is a town that was abandoned because of an underground coal fire. Literally, fire burning below your feet. Kind of cool, kind of freaky. Hey, look, it's Nathan Drugstore again. Ah, yes, a clue. This film is pretty obvious about driving Rose to visit locations around the town. Let's see what happens when she goes to the old shul house. I want you to put both hands on the wheel. Jesus, what are you doing? You're under arrest. But first, a little reminder that you can't outrun the law. Officer Bennett really took her sweet time showing up. What, did she get lost? Cracked my head on the road pretty good when my bike went down. Or that. Wear your helmet, kids. Wow, between this and the airbags coming earlier, I'd say this video is becoming more about automotive safety than anything else. Where is she? Wow, all these cops getting rained on. Apparently the detectives are the only ones who are issued umbrellas. Inspector Thomas Gucci, enjoying the weather, are you? I'm sorry, but this guy's name being Thomas Gucci made me laugh when I was watching. Funny enough, this name was actually pulled from one of the games where it was mentioned, but dang, now I can't look at this guy without thinking about luxury handbags. You people. You get off the highway from whatever big city, bringing all your sick problems with you. I guess any movie with a small town is required to have a you city people line. Ah, 
Ah, there's the big chasm again. Looks like you're stuck here. In the Silent Hill games, your radio gets static when monsters are nearby. But Rose wearing the phone around her neck does make her look like kind of a freshman. Shoot it! Stop! Officer Bennett is kind of a badass. When I watched this shot of her running up to the bus stop, I thought, haha, you fool, there's no way that this bus is running, it's a ghost town. Then I realized she was using it as a map. I do not know why I think these things. One of the reviews I read said, a lot of this movie seems like pointless running around. And when I was watching this scene, I kind of get it. For the first uh, couple of days on set, I just ran and ran and ran. It was like run, ride, or run. The video game is a lot of running around too, but it's way more fun because you control the player. In the movie, you're just kind of along for the ride. More religious stuff for us here. I'm sure it all means something, but don't hurt your brain thinking about it too much. So not only does she use the correct key on the first try, but she also happens to unlock the drawer with the flashlight, which is the thing that she was looking for. Are movies staged? Mrs. De Silva, I am an officer of the law and I will take you to safety. Back to the B plot, where we get two guys chatting and slowly revealing backstory. This is the place to take a bathroom break if anyone needs to go. November 74 when the fire caught. They tried to evacuate this place as quick as they could. It was hellish. People were dying and... They're doing this thing here where they explain the backstory of the town. I feel like in the games they leave it more ambiguous than this. But I guess for a major film release you have to hold the audience's hand a little bit. Fair enough, but I don't have to like it. Whoa, can you believe this Tweety Bird cameo? This hopscotch starts in hell and ends in heaven. So far, this movie mostly feels like hell, but maybe we're heading towards heaven? The camera moves a lot in this movie, which is probably inspired by the free moving camera in the video game. Sharon. Handprints on this desk and the words witch carved all over it. What does that mean? Think Salem, not Harry Potter. Check out this zoom, by the way. Rose just gets led to the school bathroom by this girl who is clearly not her daughter. Why would you think that this is Sharon when she's just running away from you the whole time? Rose is about to discover Moaning Myrtle in the bathroom. Too many Harry Potter jokes in this part of the video. Hey, what if someone was using one of these stalls? Ooh, I bet you weren't expecting a mutilated corpse in the bathroom stall. <laughs> Apparently the next clue was in this guy's mouth. Who's he? Colin? Sucks to be Colin. <sighs> Looks like the coal miners are after her. Rose certainly does spend a lot of this movie getting chased. My little movie life tip, if you're trying to barricade yourself in a room, try not to use yourself as the barricade in case whoever's on the other side has like a gun or an ax. They leave because their canary is freaking out. Classic coal miners, by the way. It's nightmare time. Nightmare, nightmare, nightmare! I guess that canary wasn't that useful if it only gave you like a 30 second warning before you got sworn by giant bugs. There she goes again, shaking fences. So this would be one of those moments where everybody in the theater applauds. If you don't know this guy, he's called Pyramid Head. I'll let you guess why they call him that. He's one of the most beloved villains in Silent Hill, and his shtick is basically that he carries around this big F.U. sword. And I guess you can't make a Silent Hill without including Pyramid Head. Let's check back in with Chris. Okay, he's walking around with Gucci and nothing exciting is happening. Just checking. 
So they make it clear in this scene that the Silent Hill that Rose is in is not the same one that Chris is in. There are apparently multiple dimensions that Silent Hill exists in, and Rose is in the bad one. Rose! That line is way funnier post-pandemic. You know, acting can be kind of hard because believe it or not, she's just doing this in a room with nothing scary around her. <laughs> Officer Bennett saves the day. I was wary of her before because of all the leather, but Officer Sybil Bennett has quickly become my favorite character. <laughs> if there's one thing about the nightmare version of Silent Hill, it's that there's plenty of ventilation. See, imagine if they were trying to block that door with their body, they'd be dead. Wow, this nightmare ends at the perfect possible moment. I found this. It's from a hotel. I don't know where it is, but she is in this hotel. Listen, goddammit, I... this is an emergency. Chris is very upset that he accomplished nothing on his trip to Silent Hill. Don't worry, Chris, I'm disappointed in you too. Let's take a second to appreciate the Silent Hill soundtrack. They walk in to find Anna throwing rocks at our friend Dahlia, the crazy lady we met earlier. It's basically all women in Silent Hill at this point, but that's actually by design. In fact, the only reason that Chris's boring B-plot exists is because the producers rejected the initial script for not having enough male characters. What's your name? Anna. You mean there are other people here? Christabella keeps us safe. We take refuge in the church. Oh, look, a character introduced in the middle of the film who delivers some important information for the sake of plot. I'm sure she's going to be around for a while. I'm taking this. Ah, a knife that goes shing. Let's see if we use that later, shall we? Okay, but while putting a knife in your boot seems kind of cool, I hope you're prepared to have your shin sliced open when you're running. Oh, come on, the most exciting thing that they could think to have Chris do is break into a public archives building? That's lame as hell, it's like having someone rob a library. Oh, we get to see him sift through documents now. I'd actually rather watch him do his taxes. The founders of this town were witch hunters. Witch hunts, mostly female cast. I think you see the direction that this one is heading. Hey, a convenient use for that knife you found. There's a room in here. And you conveniently lose the knife two seconds later because it served its purpose for the plot. Oh look, they've introduced platforming into this movie. Okay, so they build up this scene of her approaching this girl that she's been chasing around the town the entire time, and then... I'm burning. <gasps> That's it? I'm burning? That's what all the buildup was for? I was really expecting more. Cool, jump scare me with a bunch of birds. The darkness is coming! Let's go. Well, at least we'll get some more nightmare mode going. Nightmare, nightmare, nightmare! <laughs> So even though a few seconds ago Anna was all crazy about getting to the church before the darkness takes over, she's suddenly willing to stay outside for a chance to throw more rocks at Dahlia. She's definitely greeting here and she's going to pay for it. Yeah, so I decided not to include this in the video, but just so you know, Anna dies here and in a very gruesome way. Pyramid Head strips her clothes off and then rips her skin off in one pull. I could see why England banned this film for children under 15. Witches! Once again, Officer Bennett saves the day, but is totally out of bullets. This is a sanctuary! So this must be Christabella, who was mentioned earlier. Christabella keeps us safe. And I guess they gave her the Elaine Bennis hairdo from the early seasons of Seinfeld. Also, who's this goon behind her? This guy looks like he's straight out of the Adams family. And anyone's name not found written in the Book of Life? they will be thrown into the lake of fire. Well, we finally met the religious fanatics and the main villain, and we only had to wait an hour and 14 minutes. Let's check in on Chris. Where can I find her? 
Oh, he's assaulting a nun. Man, that's pretty low, even for Boromir. There were these people, these fanatics. What they did to that child was terrible. Yeah, so these people burned a little girl. Definitely the villains of the film. It's gonna be city boy. This city boy is from a suburb in Ohio. Let's not get crazy. So I want you to go home now. To your nice warm bed. This dialogue is strangely intimate. Let me show you where I thought this dialogue was going. So I want you to go home now. To your nice warm bed. Put on your pajamas. Have a glass of warm milk. Read your favorite book. And slowly nod off to sleep. If you wish to face the demon to find your daughter, I won't stop you. So it sounds like they have one more destination, the lair of the demon, which is an abandoned hospital. I'm game, let's get going. Oh, so these people are the ones that Rose saw earlier who were carrying around the canary. Another Silent Hill jam. Look at this map. Memorize it. If you've ever played the game before, you know that you have to check the map about every five seconds, so this is a good nod. Take this. They'll be drawn to the light. Drawn to the light? What is she about to fight a bunch of moths? Witch! Her child's the likeness of Alessa! Ah, the jig is up. They think you're a witch. But can we talk about pointing at someone with these two fingers? That's a new one for me. The next Okay, so this scene really rubbed me the wrong way. So let me break this down for you. Bennett starts kicking ass, beating up dudes with a baton. Great, love that. Completely brains this guy. Sick. Then she pulls the gun out. Remember, we know that this gun has no bullets left. So I guess the plan here is to bluff like you have bullets. She must figure that she needs to buy herself enough time to close the elevator and let Rose get away. She hit those dudes pretty hard, so I feel like she doesn't actually need to do this, but fine, whatever. Rose gets away, cool. Totally got everyone fooled on the bluff. So the plan should be keep them at gunpoint, edge your way to the door, and then get out of there. <gasps> nope, for no good reason, she just lets them all know that she has no bullets. But wait, that's okay, because she just showed us that she knows how to fight. She could probably still duke it out, or, you know, they're not right on top of her yet, so she can turn tail and run away if she's quick. So which one will it be? Oh, you're just gonna stand there and let them beat you with pipes. Okay, never mind. Such a dumb scene. It's framed as if she has to sacrifice herself here to save Rose, but she so didn't need to. And I'm like, okay, she's either dead or captured, hopefully just captured. And if she's captured, she could be saved. But you know what? No, I'm just gonna spoil it for you right now. She gets burned to death. Yep, there's just a long scene of her getting burned to death over a fire. Yep, my favorite character just makes a bunch of dumb decisions in a row and then dies painfully. Thanks, Silent Hill. Are these nurses about to break into a dance routine? But actually, for a lot of these monster roles, they got professional dancers to play the parts. That won't stop me from memeing on it, though. They're attracted to the light, so she turns the light off, slinks between them, before they erupt into a knife party. She enters this door and the movie stops cold in its tracks. We enter a cutscene where they explain basically the whole plot in case you haven't figured it out yet. Ah, that's Dahlia in a flashback and sure enough, she's super pretty. I knew it. Congratulations, Rose. You did it, and you were very good at following my clues. Okay, now it just feels like an episode of Dora the Explorer. Where do we go next? The school, right! La escuela! So while they were burning Alessa, yeah, these people were burning a child. What the heck, Elaine? They accidentally started a fire that spread and became the coal fire beneath the town. How a fire in this room ended up lighting a coal seam on fire? I don't know. Coal seam fires are usually started by poor mining practices or people burning garbage in landfills near coal seams. This one is kind of a stretch in my opinion. I'm the dark part of Alessa. 
Okay, so bear with me here while I try to understand this plot. Alessa got so mad that her hate manifested a demon, and now, every so often, Silent Hill becomes Nightmare Town. And I guess Sharon is Alessa's daughter, or part of her personality that split off? I don't really know. What do you want? Revenge. Their blind conviction repels me from their church. I cannot enter, but you can. So their plan is to infiltrate the church and murder everyone. Got it. But hey, check out this creepy hug. <laughs> ah man, you're telling me that Sharon was in Nathan Drugstore the whole time? She was hiding right under our noses. So almost everybody's been captured at this point. They've got Sharon, Dahlia, Bennett, and I'll spare you the pain of watching the scene where they burn Bennett because as I mentioned, it's a total buzzkill. It's like they only gave these extras one line to say and they're really trying to earn that paycheck. Also, Rose shows up and gets punched in the face twice. Oh, then she gets stabbed. But, because the demon child gave her a weird hug, now her blood is gonna cause one last nightmare. Nightmare, 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 nightmare! The nightmare scene features a bunch of razor wire tearing these people apart. I wasn't a fan of the razor wire because they added a ton of metal on metal scraping sounds and it really hurt my ears. Apparently they were going to have four pyramid heads come out here and start killing everyone, but the effects for that would be too expensive and I guess razor wire is cheap. Anyways, all of these townspeople die gruesome deaths. And then Rose and Sharon just wake up and get to go home. Oh, look at this funny editing trick. Oh, what? She's about to drive off a cliff? Nah, just kidding. There's a road there now. And then when they get home, it's all foggy still. Was this all a dream? It was all a dream. Nah, they're like in purgatory or something. Chris is snoozing on the couch despite Gucci telling him to sleep in his nice warm bed. Look at these Barcelona chairs. So expensive. So it turns out they're still trapped in the foggy dimension where nobody in the real world can see them. But the door is open because Rose opened it in the foggy dimension. So there's some crossover. That's the end though. What does the ending mean? I don't really know. But Sharon is acting pretty sus here, so she's probably possessed. Roll credits. So did we like the film? Doesn't matter because Gans is making another one. Return to Silent Hill was filmed in 2023 and should be racing its way to our eyeballs as we speak. Silent Hill is a good movie. And I'm not saying that just because I had to watch it three times in order to make this video or because I like pretty much every movie. I'll be honest, it's not the plot that makes it good. And it sure as hell isn't the B plot of Chris talking to people. By the way, did you know that Sean Bean was the only actor in a lead role who didn't even try to play the game? Like everybody else at least gave it a shot, but Bean was like, Nah. I spend much of my time in the real world, uh, as it were. Turns out, his role basically has nothing to do with the game. Anyways, like I was saying, it's the atmosphere of the movie that I enjoyed. There's some cool visuals and the acting and camera work are pretty decent, so it creates this universe that's just kind of enjoyable to watch. You gotta remember too that this movie was released in 2006. Movies based on video games are in a totally different place right now. They've got a Mario movie now, it's crazy. So I respect what they did here, even if some parts of the movie did bother me. Okay, so this video has basically become a free ad for the new movie coming out. You're welcome, Kristoff. But honestly, I'm excited to see the new movie, despite the fact that everyone on the internet seems to be preemptively trashing it. It's Silent Hill 2. Even if it's bad, you know I'm gonna love it. So that's all for now. Hopefully I'll be able to give you the scoop on the next film once it comes out. Remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more movie teardowns like this. Seeing people sub to my channel really helps me stay motivated. So I want you you all to know that I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching, and until next time, remember to keep your witch burnings away from the coal seams.